Welcome to Steadfast Hope, the teaching ministry of Pastor Trevon and Elder Quinn Gross. This broadcast is designed to help you remain rooted and grounded in the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now, here's today's message. So when people start trying to tell you, now healing ain't for everybody, why not? Why isn't it for everybody? If it's not for everybody, then who gets, who gets the healing and who doesn't get the healing? Well, everybody can't be blessed. Why not? And if not, who gets blessed and who doesn't get blessed? And who does the choosing? God wants all his children to walk in every promise. And we will walk in those promises to the degree that we do what he tells us to do. Amen? Thank you all. You may be seated. Thank you. So, amen, amen, amen. So, you said that, so that's why you got to start thinking about this stuff, because some folks will say, I, I, I don't believe God going to heal everybody, because I know mama so-and-so, and she prayed for healing, she didn't get it. God don't heal everybody. Well, that's not fair. How can, why would God pick and choose? He doesn't. But it's us to up us. It's up to us to believe and receive the promise. And if we don't receive, it's not God's fault. You all with me? Amen. So how do I acquire the blessing of Jubilee? How do I get what God has promised me? How do I bring into manifestation all the promises that God has stored up for me in that invisible world that my natural eye cannot see? How do I do it? Got eight points for you. I'm going to give them to you, then we're going to go back and flow through them. Ready? The first is purity, the purity factor. The second is the proselytizing factor. I think they're putting it up on the screen for you. We're going to come back to it. The third is the professions factor. The fourth is the prayer factor. The fifth is the planting factor. The sixth is the persecution factor. The seventh is the praise factor. And the eighth is the persistence factor. Now I'm going to teach them real quick to you. All right? So the first is the purity factor. Turn to Daniel, (coughs) chapter 1. We're on this Daniel fast, so you all need to know who who this fast is after. It's after the Daniel, in the book of Daniel. Amen. And and really, we're going to stay in Daniel for the rest of the way, because I want to just pull out some points from Daniel's life. We talk about his fast. We might as well understand who he is. Daniel, chapter 1, start with verse 8. Daniel was was a slave in a in a foreign country. But he purposed in his heart that he was going to live for God, that even though he was in a pagan, godless land, he was not going to live by the standard of the land he was in, but he was going to live by his God's standards, regardless of who was around him. Daniel chapter one, verse eight. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He said, uh, Daniel said, listen, I'm from another world. I have another way of doing things. I'm asking that I don't want to have any of that food that comes from the king's table. You let me eat what God instructed me to eat. And I and I believe that by the time we go before the king, I will look better than all the people who ate the best on the king's table. And guess what happened? When they went before the king, Daniel and those who followed his way looked far better than those who ate what was on the king's table. Why do we sometimes think that the world offers us more than what God offers us? Is it that we don't have a conviction that God's way is really the best way? Is that why we are so committed to doing things by the world's standard as opposed to doing things by God's standards? Is that why we have so many undercover Christians? 
because we don't want people to know that we're from another world, that we don't live by the same playbook that the rest of the world lives by. There's a purity factor that says, I will not be defiled by the ways of the world. How many of us, don't raise your hand, but how many of us are truly, truly sold out to this walk that we are on? If your boss came in, though it may be illegal, all right, but if your boss came in and said, if you're a Christian, this is your last day working here. I know y'all in church, y'all gonna say that, see? But, you know, if your boss called you in his office privately, when nobody else was around, and said, I don't want any Christians working here. And so if you're a Christian, this is your last day. Nobody else around, no church folk around. I don't care how illegal it is, take out the illegality factor of it. Would you stay there? You want to, don't, don't answer now, but search your heart. Because that will determine the degree to which you're really committed to God. Amen. Because I believe for many of us, Christianity is just a preference. And we're, we're committed to it to the degree that it doesn't cost us anything. But the moment the call of Christ costs us something, we want to shirk back. So there's a purity factor. The Bible also calls that purity factor holiness. Yes. It's living right. Many of us, we don't see things happen in our lives because we simply don't live right. We don't tell the truth. We don't keep our word. Welcome to Steadfast Hope, the teaching ministry of Pastor Trevon and Elder Quinn Gross. This broadcast is designed to help you remain rooted and grounded in the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now, here's today's message. 